So as we sat here and watched our own parking lot fill up with snow, yeah. we kept saying, when is Knox County going to get? When is Knox County? And suddenly when they made the announcement about, what, 930? Yeah, it was just either right after 930 or right around 930. The announcement came out that it was going to be 11 o'clock for elementary schools and 1145 for Midland High Schools. About an hour to an hour and a half after everyone else around the area had already released. A lot of people were doing 10, 10, 15. 10, 10, 15, 10, yep. 30. Yeah. If um, not, come and get the kids as quickly as possible. Sure. You know, all that sure. kind of stuff. Sure. Um, and that was, it was kind of odd because when we looked down the, the closing list, there was there was a, a large discrepancy there. So we were trying to figure out why was it taking that long to get back to to the central, uh, uh, to, the, to get the buses back out and what was going on. Mm-hmm. A um, couple of things that have popped up that are really kind of troubling. And these these have come from different sources and some, some different people. Mm-hmm. Um, at Knox Views, one of, the, one of the theories that came up was that the reason they waited so long is apparently there is, there is something stated in, uh, in the Knox County Board of Education Policy, the BEP, under attendance, in order to be counted present on any and all account, uh, accounting attendance records, students in grades 1 through 12 shall attend school for a time period of 3 hours and 15 minutes per school day. Students who attend less than 3 hours and 15 minutes per school day should be recorded and reported as absent on any and all attendance records. If you look at the 28th, when the school day began at 745 for elementary school students, 11 a.m. release would be exactly 3 hours and 15 minutes. Hmm. If you look at the same Wednesday, high school and middle school students' school day, they begin at 8.30. Therefore, 11.45 would be school attendance for a total of 3 hours and 15 minutes. Right. So apparently, um, student enrollment, according to the BEP funding formula, student enrollment, average daily membership, is the primary driver of funds generated by the BEP. So funds tied to funds tied to attendance is one theory, um, which there are yeah plenty, especially federal. Mm-hmm. Here is so that I mean that's bad enough. Mm-hmm. You're going to put students' safety at risk for a day of federal funding money. There's something inherently wrong with that. On the other end, the other theory that's popped up that I find even even worse for the simple fact that it's tied to school lunches, and the simple fact of that is school lunches as a whole right now with the entire change of guidelines and, 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 and the, the meddling from our first lady, um, it's crap. It's absolute crap they're serving our kids. And, and I hear it's, it it's, it's not even enough crap. No. Like, it's not even crap yeah. that can get you full. You're, you're going to tell me a yeah. 14-year-old boy, and I have one. I've had a couple of them. We've got one right now in the house. You're going to tell me a 14-year-old boy can be, can, can, be, can be fed nutritiously and will be full to concentrate on the rest of his school day from four chicken nuggets, a cup of uh, applesauce, and a milk. Isn't that ridiculous? Have that, you seen this pile of crap? That, according to uh, government guidelines, is a nutritious full meal. <laughs> I wouldn't get boy. full on four chicken nuggets, not even eat the thing. That's not even a snack. That's barely an appetizer. Yeah. You're going to tell me you know a 14-year-old kid, boy or girl anywhere, that would sit down and eat four chicken nuggets, a cup of applesauce, and a little carton of milk. A half pint. Yeah. That, that's your full lunch. <laughs> that's silly. I'm sorry. It is. I mean, it's ridiculous. You know? I don't know if we're... we're uh, you know, I mean, if she's judging this on what... Uh, 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 Malia and the other daughter eats, you know. Well, well this is what they like, so this is obviously full. This will fill anybody else up. And some broccoli. But, Mike, the less we give everybody, the more they have. Here's the thing, though. Oh, there's, actually, the thing? Uh, yeah. there's actually a uh, USDA government uh, uh, breakdown. There is a, a, a formula for lunches. And I've been told by some of the teachers that they were told we're going to release at 11 and 11.45. Mm-hmm. Right now, make sure and get all your classes in. We're going to do lunch at 10 o'clock. We're going to do lunch at 10 o'clock. Get them that nutritious lunch before they go. 
Because sure. apparently... That sounds good. Knox County has 57,000 enrolled students. Let's assume that 65% of them actually qualify for a lunch program. That means 57 times 0. .65. That's uh, 37,050. Get a free reduced lunch. So a subsidy of $3 per lunch. So 37,050 lunches. That's uh, $111,150 per day. 28 cents per paid lunch. So 50,000 times 35 is 19,950. Paid lunches, 28 cents. That's uh, $5,586 per subsidy. Okay, so in a week, you're looking at $583,000 in a month, $2 million in a year. That's $28 million in federally subsidized wow. lunch it's money. some big money, doesn't it? So you're talking about maybe in a day missing out on over $100,000 in federally funded money. Mm-hmm. Then I guess it's more important than kids' safety. To make sure you get that federal that that those federal grants those federal uh, uh, that federal money for the day, right? Because that's more important. It's about, it's about the kids, and it's about the money they can generate. Is that what that's what it says to me? Yeah. Woo! That's what it looks like. It's a little weird. So those are the theories going around. Those if that's the, the truth, then uh, then there is something inherently wrong with this entire system, and somebody needs to answer. If that's what's going on, because I guarantee you, they're going to come around and say, "No, no, no, it's because we couldn't get the boat, we couldn't get the." Why is it then the rest of the day, everybody else around you, all these smaller school systems, all these school systems that aren't as up to date and uh, and don't have all the technology that you have, how come they could get it done right? And still, I want somebody to explain to me how a bus driver drops off kids at, at a at a Weigel's and leaves them there. And yet in Sevier County, we had the same problems with some of the buses. They couldn't make it back to the homes. So you know what they did? These contracted bus drivers took the kids back to the school. And the school t- stayed in contact with the parents throughout the day to let them know what was going on. And you know what happened? Parents were happy. Things were done. Kids were taken care of because it was about the kids. If you're holding kids over because of federal money for attendance or because of lunches, then there's something inherently wrong with what you're doing. My thought. 